So the fourth part of this video, we're gonna talk about uh, the upcoming second prototype. So uh, some design changes that I've made to this one after riding this for about eight or nine months now. Um, so I've actually, the major one, I've actually gone to two-sided because this fork has a lot of anti-dive because the brake caliper is bolted directly to the link. Uh, whenever the suspension cycles, this means that the brake caliper rotates around the disc a certain number of degrees. Uh, and when it does this, you, you, and you're braking, you're generating anti-dive force, that's where that anti-dive force comes from. Um, it's just the, the angular change that the brake caliper goes through in relation to the disc. Uh, so telescopic forks don't have any anti-dive force because the, the brake caliper is fixed to the leg and it doesn't rotate around, the brake caliper doesn't rotate around the disc. Um, so I thought this would be a benefit that I liked. Um, Initially, I thought it was quite good. Uh, then I noticed a few things that, that weren't, that I wasn't really a fan of. Um, so it is true, the bike does stay higher up in its travel, the, the head angle stays more consistent, more slack when, you, when you're heavy on the front brake with an anti-dive system like this. Um, but I found that it, your braking force seems to go down. Obviously the braking force is still the same because the, it's the same caliper, same, same lever and everything, but it just feels like you slow down slower. Uh, and you have less grip on the front wheel. Um, so I decided for the second version to go fully floated. So for the second version, we'll have a, a floated brake mount or floated system here, which will just consist of a parallelogram. So there'll be four points, the pivot point, the axle, a point up here, about 60 mil up, and a point on the fork as well. And that'll just form a parallelogram. Um, so whenever the suspension cycles, wherever it is in its cycle, the brake caliper will be at the same position. Uh, and then the right hand side will house the shock uh, so I managed to get a little bit more room uh, for piggyback reservoirs and any sort of extra features like out levers and things uh, things that might stick out left and right of, of the particular shock that you might be using um, I know for example the Fox X2 looks like it has a quite big air cam um, or quite wide air cam so I wanted to try and make it compatible with as, with as many um, rear shocks as possible um, what else have we got? Uh, it should be strong and stiffer because it's going to be two-sided. Um, the carbon fiber version of the fork legs will be 15 millimeter diameter again, same sort of layout, um, same width, 15 millimeter width, 20 millimeter axles, same size bearings, 20 by 32. Uh, the steel version will be much the same. Uh, obviously that will be heavier, but maybe a bit more robust in terms of damage or hitting things or rock strikes or um, will ideally be cheaper as well to, to produce. And uh, this means it could be 15 millimeter compatible as well, or 15 millimeter axle compatible. So I might offer, or might try and do a, uh, an adapter somehow, maybe within the link. So you can just use normal, uh, well not a normal axle, but a 15 millimeter axle. So people wouldn't have to change hubs. Um, and then a bearing mounted shock as well, I really wanted to try that. Uh, so you don't notice a lot of stiction at all, um, but, this end of the shock here goes through about six and a half, seven degrees of angular rotation, not a lot. So if you have a bit of stiction here, it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't think you're going to tell anyway, but this slide goes through about, well on the second version, about 50 degrees worth of angular rotation. So putting a bearing mount here, either just uh, a sort of a Fox bearing mount, a Rock Shocks bearing mount, um, or something like a spherical eyelet bearing mount, like some bikes have these days, uh, that would do a lot to reduce the stiction even further. I mean, the stiction is hardly anything anyway. Uh, and I think there's everything for the upcoming second prototype. Um, and just a, a few more quality of life improvements as well. As you can see, I've, I've got the the brake cable to sell a tape to. You can, I could use cable ties, but it's it's quite close to the wheel there. Um, and there, there aren't any, any uh, brake cable mounts or brake uh, cable ties there. So the second version will have those. Uh, and that's about it for the second prototype, basically addressing all the, not problems, but all the, the improvements that I thought I could make to something like this. This, this first prototype was a bare bones version, absolutely bare bones. Um, I just wanted to be able to use a rear shock of 230 by 65 size, uh, use a 200 mil rotor, use a 20 millimeter axle, through axle, uh, use, a, use a 29 inch wheel if I wanted to, um, and just bolt it onto my fork, uh, bolt it onto my frame and, and ride basically. 